Hello everyone, my name is the Digital Kingdom Editor and you might be wondering what exactly am I looking at right in front of you? What is all of this, this garble, googly nonsense? Well, um, I have been working on just three different kinds of projects that kind of build on top of one another. Um, and I've been doing this as a way to kind of help boost my resume a little bit. Um, and just kind of as like a little fun side project that I've, I've seen other people do. But I was like, hey, if they can do it, so can I. And I just kind of wanted to try my hand at it. And um, I think it turned out pretty good. So so how this video is going to work is that I am going to um, go through one by one. So I'm going to first run each one of these so that way you can see what it does. Um, and then if you are interested, um, I will go through the code. And so that way um, you can kind of understand what's happening. I'm going to leave timestamps for all this because I know some people are here for the the more cooler parts of actually running it and not so much the coding portion. So, um, yeah, so that's how we're going to do today's video. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get on into it. So this first app here is basically just going to be a very simple way of connecting to ChatGPT as well as using it inside of a terminal. So typically it's really not that much different. So this here is ChatGPT, right? So if you wanted to to tell ChatGPT to do something, you would type it down here. So um, let's just say, hi there, you're on YouTube. And then it would say something like, you know, that's awesome. What's the latest content you're working on for YouTube? Is it something for Digital Kingdom Extras or on, on a different channel? Which is interesting that it says Extras, but okay. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that is pretty much the the gist of that um so it, it pretty much does the same function so let's go ahead and hit play and uh this is on my slow laptop so it might take a little bit but essentially what's going to happen is that it's going to let you type down here so um instead of it you know saying like i guess it's a little more obvious in terms of who is who with this but uh that's why i had to add in something called user so Basically, if you want to type in something, we can say, hello there, you're on YouTube. Um, smile for the camera. I don't know. Yeah, just some, just something weird. So, and then, oh, it actually did. Very nice. Yeah, so what it'll do is, it's pretty much just like a, a more dumbed down version of it. So, you type in something, right? And then the bot, which is ChatGPT, that's just going to respond to it. So it, they said hello. And then a little smiley face. Very cool. While I can't actually be on camera, I'm here to help you with any questions or topics that you want to discuss. What can I assist with today? Or what can I assist you with today? And then basically it's just going to keep on going until I decide that I want to type in either quit, exit, or buy. Um, so we, uh, just for demonstration purposes, we can probably do like one or two more prompts. So let's go ahead. Yeah. So I'm just going to ask it something weird. How do you feel about being inside or being connected to a, oh shit, I accidentally press enter. It seems like your message cut off. Could you please provide more context or complete your question? Yes. Um, okay. How do you feel about being connected to a Python program that I'm running right now as we speak? And then it's probably going to say something. Yeah. As an AI language model, I don't have feelings or conscious or consciousness, so I don't have opinions about being connected to a Python program or any of the system. However, I'm here to assist you with any questions or help you, uh, or help you may need, huh. oh, or help you may need, okay, I was like, what the fuck, my right hand at aneurysm there, okay, but yeah, so that's pretty much the gist of it, um, and you may be asking yourself, okay, well, what's the difference between this and using ChatGPT, it's like, really, there is none, you know, there's really not a difference between using this and using this like it's there, there just really isn't a difference you know like it's just more of a simplified version and yeah so 
Um, yeah, so th that's pretty much all for the, um, for that. So we'll, we'll kill that program. It's going to throw some bullshit, but it's all good. Um, oh yeah, I guess I could have done quit exit or buy. It's whatever though. Um, okay. Yeah, so this will be the code portion. So, uh, basically we have to import the open AI library. So we have to actually install that onto our system. So that way we can actually connect to chat GPT and all that goodness. And then we're importing our OS because um, I have the API key, which is, if you don't know what an API key is, um, it's a way to connect to different systems, uh, a way to kind of have machines talking to one another um, through like a specific key. An API key is kind of like having a key to your own house. Um, I, I wanted to give this to John because I feel like this would be kind of like a cool thing for him to have, maybe do on stream or something. Um, and that's that's partially why I've also been developing this as well, just kind of as, as like a like a cool side project, but also having maybe some practicality with it. But, um, but yeah, so with that, so the API key is basically the way that you connect to the OpenAI in order to actually do stuff with it. And, and kind of as I was saying before, an API key is kind of like having a key to your own house. If other people get that API key, you're probably going to have intruders and other bad things happen inside of your home. So um, you kind of want to make sure that API keys are secure. The way that I do that is I set my key as an environment variable on my system. Um, and then I just I do OS and then it'll get the environment key. And then this is the name that I set it to. So so my open AI API key, that's the name of the variable and it's going to have a value associated with that. So, um, just to kind of help keep things secure and just kind of make sure that people aren't yoinking my API key. Cause unfortunately I did put some money into this. So I think every message I send to chat GBT is like, I don't know, like one, one hundredth of a cent and that can get used up pretty quick. Um, if, if it falls into the hands of the wrong people. So. Um, but yeah, so we have a API key set as an invariable or as an environment variable. Um, and then, yeah, so this is kind of where the, the main magic happens. So we have a function that's called chat and then it'll take in whatever prompt that the user wants to give it. Um, and then it's going to generate a response. Um, so it's going to use the GPT 4.0 mini model, which I think GPT 4 is the most recent model i don't think many is the most recent one i think there's like one or two maybe above that but i just wanted to use something that's a little more cheaper but still gets the job done so so yeah the model is basically just going to be a gbt40 mini and then it's just going to generate a message um based on whatever is pretty much being thrown in here right so yeah so in a nutshell it's going to say so the role is that it's going to be bought um, it's going to take in pretty much the user prompt and generate content, um, kind of based off of that. Um, and then, yeah, so, and then this is going to continue to loop. So while the user hasn't quit, um, it's just going to keep asking user for input. Um, so as you saw, you know, once I put in something and hit enter, it generates a response and then it'll keep asking me, you know, you know, what's what what else do you want to say? Pretty much like ChatGPT already does, right? So it's going to keep doing that until I type in specifically quit, exit, or buy. Which I'm actually going to demonstrate real quick because I did not do that. So let me actually go ahead and do that real quick. So we're going to type, uh, just we're just going to type exit, right? And then it quits and we're all good. So, uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much it for that. So, um... Yeah, so the next one I want to show you is going to be a little more interesting. So, as you can see up here, it's voice to text. And you might be wondering, what the fuck does that mean? Well, um, let me go ahead and actually show you guys. So, just kind of keep an eye on the prompts and stuff down here, and we will go ahead and get started. Hello there. You are on a YouTube video, and you are being connected to a Python terminal. What are your thoughts on this? And yeah, there we go. 
um yeah so in a nutshell i have pretty much built upon what was already existing and i essentially made it to where you could talk you can actually talk to chat gpt which is pretty cool so you can use your microphone to actually do this so let's kind of see right so it'll ask you to speak into your microphone and then if it recognizes speech or if it recognizes what you're actually trying to say so hello there you are on a youtube video and you are being connected to a python terminal what are your thoughts on this and it, it does a pretty good job with that um i feel like it does pretty good in terms of kind of because like i i honestly kind of figured it would make it a run-on sentence but it didn't which is right nice you know because you have your first sentence and then your actual question sentence that's pretty advanced shit so all right yeah so in a nutshell um it's it's gonna recognize what you say it's gonna then generate a user, which is you. It's pretty much just gonna repeat it. And then, of course, we have the bot response, which is like, hello, being connected to a Python terminal while discussing a YouTube video sounds like an exciting way to en enhance interactivity. It allows for dynamic demonstrations, coding examples, or live troubleshooting based on the topics being addressed in the video. And then yada, yada, yada. So, um, yeah, so as you have seen, it basically is a way for you to actually talk to chat gpt using a microphone and that's honestly a little better because i don't think there is a function in chat gpt to actually do that there is file attaching which is an, i don't have at any of my codes but you know it's pretty good um and you know for those who maybe aren't as quick with typing um this could potentially be something that's like hey this has pretty practical use it's not too bad you know um but yeah so and then of course down here um because it is detecting microphone i figured it'd be good just to make sure between each prompt all you really have to do is if you want to continue you just press enter otherwise if you want to quit you just type quit so um for this just for demonstration we'll go ahead and continue are you sure that you you don't want to talk about that because it kind of seems like an interesting topic yeah i don't know i just i started just spitting out some bullshit but yeah it's going to do the exact same thing it's going to recognize your speech it's going to put that speech as text and then that text is going to be taken in by chat gpt and it's going to output a message so um but yeah so let's go ahead and quit and i will go ahead and actually show you guys the actual functionality of it so let's like quit and there we go so in a nutshell, uh, pretty much the same idea. However, you may be wondering how I actually get the the speech services and stuff like that. So that's actually from Azure. So um, if you haven't heard of Microsoft Azure, it's basically a it's basically Microsoft's cloud services and different kinds of things that are with that. You know, you can start up virtual machines. Um, you can do what I do with cognitive services and speech. Um, there's a whole array of tools out there that you can use for that. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so that, that's that's pretty much kind of the main other thing that I'm adding in with this. Um, so um, again, we're connecting to the open AI API, importing OS to get the environment variables. Um, I got to remember why we import time. I don't even know if we use it, to be honest. Yeah, I don't I don't think we even use it. Um, oh, well. And then we have Azure Cognitive Services Speech, um, just so that way it can recognize my voice and be able to turn that um, voice into text, hence voice to text. All right. And then obviously we're still calling our API key from OpenAI. Um, if we're missing it, it's going to let us know. And then as we saw in the last one, it's basically just going to chat GPT will take in a prompt. Uh, it's going to use the 4.0 mini model and then it will generate messages um, based on what it uh, is taking in from the user. So uh, and then from there, this is where the good fun stuff comes in. So so, yeah, this is basically going to be a speech to text manager class, which um, will kind of handle all of the uh, the heavy lifting for the uh, the voice to text stuff. Right. So um, basically, we're going to set up. We're going to set up Azure on our computer here, and it's basically going to be kind of the same idea. So we have our Azure text-to-speech key. I don't know why I called it that. Um, I probably should have said like voice-to-text, but 
it's it's too late at this point um but yeah so we we set that up we have our key here and then the region um i also hid the region because i, I don't know if that's still a privacy concern or not i figured it'd probably just be safe to do that so yeah um it's gonna try to set that up with a key and the region if it can't it's gonna let you know um if something happens if something fucks up it's gonna let you know we set the the speech recognition language to um english in the united states uh because that is currently where i live uh you could probably change that to wherever it is um so yeah all right and then this is actually where you get to actually capture speech and convert it to text so um basically there's a setting to, to where you can use your default microphone for me this is just going to be like a like a blue yeti microphone that i just plug into my computer um i have that set as the default and then um and then you're going to have a speech recognizer so that's just going to basically take in all of the the audio configuration that we did previously and just kind of put it all together and then as you saw on the output it's going to ask you to speak into your microphone and then it's going to let you speak and then it's going to see if it can recognize the um what you're trying to say so for example if you were to speak properly um it would say recognized and then it would tell you the speech that it got and then it would use that otherwise um for whatever reason you know for example maybe if you don't speak um if you use a different language that it doesn't recognize it, that it's not english or maybe not united states english um anything like that it's gonna say that it couldn't recognize it and just kind of tell you why or just kind of give you more information regarding that um otherwise if the speech is canceled for whatever reason like for example if uh, maybe something on Azure is like messing up. Um, it's going to let you know that the speech recognition was canceled and it'll tell you why. And then it'll kind of give you um, any more details in terms of why it, it messed up. Um, if you see that, that's a pretty bad sign. But uh, luckily with us on, on this laptop, we don't have that issue. So that's pretty good. And then basically it's just going to keep running a continuous loop that's like... You know, you'll you'll speak into your microphone. It takes that input, gives it to ChatGPT. ChatGPT makes a response, and then it will give you the option to either continue or you can quit by entering quit. So that's all this is doing. It's just going to continuously keep running this program until you decide that you want to stop. Um, but yeah, so that, that's pretty much it, right? Um, so this is basically just like a voice to text kind of thing for ChatGPT, which is pretty dope. But yeah, so in a nutshell, um, as you can see, things have kind of been building on top of one another. So this this last one here is going to be very interesting. Um, let me go ahead and just show you guys before I explain anything, because I feel like once you get it, it's going to be pretty cool. So let's go ahead and run this. OK, we're going to try that again. All right. Hello. Um, are you able to hear me at all? Can you can you tell me anything? Are you are you alive? Hello, I can hear you just fine. I'm here to assist you with any questions or topics you'd like to discuss. While I'm not alive in the traditional sense, I'm programmed to provide information and engage in conversation. How can I help you today? Now that was pretty fucking sick if I say so myself, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yes, yeah, so now ChatGPT has a way to actually talk to you, more or less. Um, it's pretty interesting. Now, this is a voice in Azure that I'm using, um, just like I think one of their standard ones. I know you can create your own voice and, and kind of do different kinds of voice models and stuff like that, which I think would be fun. Um, Eleven Labs, there's a way to do that, I'm pretty sure, so I could maybe take a look into that using like a custom voice or something. Um, but yeah, so... Um, ChatGPT now has a voice. That's pretty cool. So, as you can see, I kind of just... Because we had an issue. I don't know what happened here. Um, yeah, sometimes it does that. It's a little weird, but yeah. So, in a nutshell, you know, I, I speak into my microphone. It's going to it's gonna hear what I say and turn that into text. You know, so I said, okay, we're going to try that again. All right, hello. Are you able to hear me? Can you tell me anything? Are you alive? And then it's going to... As you saw, it's going to generate a response through text, but then it's going to take that text and put it into a um, text-to-speech uh, little synthesizer, and it's going to 
play that audio clip automatically, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so if you actually like want to talk with chat GPT, um, you can, um, albeit it's not really so much like talking per se, but it kind of gives the illusion that you are. So uh, we're going to do it one more time. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and actually uh, just hit enter and we will just, uh, just ask you like one more thing. How, oh shit. Um, damn, I actually didn't think about what I wanted to ask. Okay. Um, here's my question. How do you feel about being on a YouTube video connected to a Python terminal right now? Because that, that's what it is right now. And you're also going to have a voice after this, so that's that's pretty insane. Oh, it... That sounds like a really interesting project. I'm here to provide information and assistance, whether it's through text, code, or even voice. The idea of being part of a YouTube video connected to a Python terminal is quite creative, and I hope it adds value to your content. If you have any specific questions or need help with something related to Python or any other topic, feel free to ask. All right, yeah, I like how it, I like how it even censored my, uh, my curse word there, very nice. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, so essentially, you can talk to ChatGPT, that's pretty much the, the gist of it, so. Um, yeah, so that's pretty good. We'll go ahead and, and uh, we'll type in quit. Uh, which will allow us to go ahead and get on out of here and then i will go through the code um as we've been seeing uh we're just going to uh just connect to OpenAI as well as azure uh, we're gonna get a couple of other files in here and then um we're gonna call the open ai api key again um go through the whole chat gpt prompt thing again uh, i've already explained that twice i don't want to go too too deep into it again um and then yeah, again, it's it's setting up Azure so that way we can get the uh, the, the environment keys and region. Uh, it's gonna get the speech to text, so it's gonna recognize all of that. So we've already done that. Now, this is the new part. This is going to be the text to speech manager. So this is basically going to be a way to give ChatGPT that that voice that I gave it, right? So in a nutshell, um, we're gonna connect to. Um, Azure, once again, we're going to have a different kind of um, key, though, this time, because um, this is kind of different from what we've been using, right? So this this key up here, this Azure text-to-speech key, that's specifically for the speech-to-text. Um, so we have to get a new key, and I just called it Azure text-to-speech 2 key, um, in order to have the text-to-speech stuff um, kind of be separate, right? Because uh, they, there are two separate processes that kind of happen. Um, so we, we go, we go get those. If they're missing, it'll let us know. If something messes up, it'll let us know. And then, uh, the speech synthesis voice name. So the one that I chose is just called, um, Andrew Multilingual Neutral. And I think that just means that, um, it's just going to be in English. It's going to be kind of like a U.S. United States accent. And it's just going to be, uh, just my boy Andrew, I guess, um, Talking normally, I, I I know on some of the other voices you can choose to, uh, what's it called? You can have them have a little more energy to them and have different kinds of reactions and stuff like that. Um, but I, I figured just for, for this, just for my sake, just for this kind of project, just a neutral voice is, is fine. I don't think we need it to be too, um, too emotion, emotional, I guess is probably the the best word i can describe for that but all right so as you can see here this is where the new magic is going to be happening so this is going to be a text-to-speech function that's going to take in um text that chat gbt has and it's going to um, turn that into speech basically so um we have an audio config here which is basically going to generate and output a um a wave file called output so output.wave um from there it's going to basically try to use the text that it's receiving and it's going to try to generate a output file more than likely it will complete so you'll see the the speech set this is completed so that's kind of what this little thing is down here uh just to let us know that it has successfully been translated into into speech um otherwise if for whatever reason it's canceled or it's just not able to it'll it'll let you know um, and then we have a function here that will let you play 
the output.wav file because that kind of needs to happen automatically because that file is going to be saved on your computer but without this there's no way to actually play that file and give chat gpt a voice automatically so that's basically what this is doing so it's going to open up that um basically going to try to play that file um if it can it's going to run it if it can't it'll let you know and i'll let you know hey something something's up we'll, we'll play in the audio and yeah and then um pretty much as you have seen um pretty much with all the other ones there's gonna just be that same kind of loop where you speak into your microphone chat gpt will give you a response and then it'll ask hey you can quit or you can press enter to continue um so it's basically just gonna keep doing that and i have the timers down there just just to make sure that um it gets through the uh the audio fine without any issue um but yeah so with with that with that with this demonstration um i figured it would be cool if there was somehow a way because i've already seen it done on a channel called doug doug um basically i think he did a live stream where he's playing through pajama sam and he made something pretty similar to this uh, where he could interact with ChatGPT and basically describe certain things to it and uh, play through um, Pajama Sam, which is uh, if you if you haven't heard of it, uh, I'm, I'm 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 old man, so um, it was like it was like a late 1990s game that came out. It's just like a simple point and click kind of game, and I think it would be super cool to be able to have ChatGPT. Um, try and play that game but obviously we would just have to describe everything we'd have to to kind of give it options and just kind of see if we can get through it and i, I think that'd be fun uh, i think it'd be super fun to do um but yeah so i i wanted to make this video just because i feel like it is something that is cool to talk about and i just kind of want to see if maybe that video idea or that stream idea potentially is something that could be worth doing um down the line but um but yeah so uh with that out of the way um hopefully you guys enjoyed this um it did take a little bit to kind of put together but i'm very proud of how it came out um and i i think i think it could have very cool uses in the future uh but yeah we just have to see so uh with that out of the way thank you guys so much for watching uh my name is the digital kingdom editor and I will hopefully see y'all soon.